today we are changing our project plans. We had planned to do um, painting, but it is flurrying and in the 20s. And so instead we're gonna do a skill building project. This is the table from inside our 2006 Airstream. It has all kinds of damage and issues. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it out of this birch plywood. And then we're going to see if we can edge band it to give it a little bit more of a finished look. Cutting corners, it's so cold. I really need to get into Dreamboat. Are you sure you're warm enough? I'm not warm. I see people with beautiful custom tables online all the time and they have like epoxy inlays and like compasses and that kind of stuff. We don't have a garage and we have to work in kind of a limited space. So we're going to do this really, really simply. We're just going to cut the shape of the table. We're going to try to edge band. We've never edge band anything before. At this point, I'd like to try and produce a more finished looking product. So that's what we're kind of doing today. With all of this other work to do, um, it's basically too cold for us to continue painting the wheel wells and the frame or any of that kind of stuff. And it's gonna be this cold for at least the next seven to 10 days. So in the meantime, I might as well try and learn something new. We'll see. Are you sure you don't want gloves? I'm okay. Okay, if you're okay. Uh, prepare the surface edge, fill any large holes, sand rough spots, remove sawdust, and make sure your cutting edge is a half an inch longer than the surface to be covered. Preheat your iron to cotton setting. Slowly press the iron over the edging. Check to see if your glue is melting. Then we let it cool completely and we trim any excess with the bandit edge trimmer. Sand smooth and finish as desired. I said that I can apply this and then trim it and where my plywood has chipped out, fill any chip outs and stuff and I want to do that all at once after this is already applied and trimmed and everything. And this is I guess really thin wood veneer so I should be able to stain paint or whatever. Alright scissors to cut this. How'd that work? I'm sure it'll dull up the scissors pretty quickly but it was easy. Very high tech method that your grandma showed me. Check if the iron was hot. I'm nervous. It's so silly to be nervous but I am. Do you want a glove on that left hand? I'm learning a new skill. No, but thank you for offering. Since this is an experiment, I'm thinking maybe I'm just gonna peel it up right here and see. I wonder if you could sandpaper the... Oh, you know what? That's really stuck down. I don't want to lift it. I wanted Good. to see what it felt like. And it but feels stuck? It feels very, very stuck, so... Good news. Let's not mess with it. The um, scarf joint that they put in the middle of that is kind of ugly. Yeah, a little bit. But I guess this is the back side, so practice is practice, right? It says to push it down while it's hot with like a block or something. I happen to have a socket right here. That's what I'm gonna use. If I have to redo this piece for the sake of learning, that's okay. All right, let's see if I can trim it once it cools. Let's turn the iron off so that I can turn the heat on because I'm freezing. That's not right. Test one, I'm gonna need wood filler because I scraped a little of the birch veneer off of the plywood. It was too much pressure. You can see here on the edge where I get it right and where I get it really wrong. I wonder if having less on the end I may have to take this piece off and do it again. I wasn't really sure how to adhere it and I didn't adhere it in a straight uniform way. So when I was peeling it, it kind of was like chipping out. And in some sense with wood fillers and stuff, it's not gonna be a big deal, but um, I really wanna learn how to do it well on this experiment so that I can do it better um, when I have like the sides of dream boats cabinetry. Let me cut this again or trim it again and see how it looks and feels and I may heat it up and peel it off. What I've learned is that I need to make sure when I'm applying this I need it to be more centered. I also need to make sure my pressure isn't too far down into the substrate here because it'll peel off the veneer on the plywood like this side. I've gotten better. This is a much smoother cut on this side than this side, which is pretty wonky. So I'm gonna try and skin, skim this again. 
it's not perfect and there's a learning curve with it. And I'm not sure in one package if I have enough, if I make a mistake going around, but I think what I'm gonna start by doing the big, huge, long loop and getting that ironed on. But even still, even with my mistakes, this looks pretty finished. It's not perfect, but a little wood putty, wood filler, and some sanding, and it actually feels kind of nice, especially when you compare it to the other edge. I started the long side, and I'm just going to tack it down at the end here. So you can see where this is loose and not stuck, and this is very nicely stuck down. Back over. So according to the rules of baseball, you can't switch sides of the plate in the same at bat, as far as I know. Luckily, I'm not playing baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Throws left, irons left. What I learned from doing the end is that I prefer pulling this towards my body. And what I'm going to try to do is pull it towards my body, get to the corner, and I'm not really sure how that's going to feel. I don't know if it'll come off in one strip. Probably not. I don't have that kind of skill yet, but maybe. Here's the before and here's the after. And even with flaws, I feel like this is a much finished, more finished product. Now, I could sand this down and make this piece look a lot, a lot better than it does just after it's been freshly cut. I think this definitely looks more finished. We can see on camera, but there's chips along the edge. And the next step for me, I've been told, is to wood filler these and then sand everything as smooth as possible. Yesterday, I got the edge banding on. I couldn't take the cold anymore. Today, I'm going to do, try to put on the wood filler. I'm gonna let it sit overnight and then I'll try sanding it tomorrow. So it takes 24 hours um, before I can paint it with like an oil-based paint or anything like that. And if I did a water-based paint, it would be like two hours for it to cure after um, application. But I'm going to try and get the chips and stuff covered on both sides. I'm gonna let it cure up and I'm gonna sand it tomorrow because it's still very cold. Even though it's sunny, I'm not interested in being out here freezing. So I'm gonna do this in baby steps and take my time. I've been sort of working on my technique here with the wood filler. Uh, this little tiny tub cost me about $5 and I probably could have gotten two or three times as much for about $7. But about, I would guess a third of this will likely get dried out and thrown away before I could actually use it. So the bigger tub and storing the bigger tub and managing the bigger tub, well in some sense is a better deal. It would have been just more waste. So. Yeah, there's that. I'm not a woodworker, so I'm kind of just winging it and doing what feels or looks good to me. I'm gonna snap the cover or rest the cover on this loosely. I can feel whatever I use on my putty knife dry really, really quickly. Now I have the heat blowing directly on me, so it's probably not helping, but I'm not willing to be cold to save that much product. And it's filling it really nicely. Some, some professional cabinet makers can be horrified by what I'm doing. The internet could, could flame me, but I think it, it actually looks better. It doesn't really use much at all, does it? No, not at all. You can see here where when I was doing the edge banding, it cut a little low and a little wonky. I'm gonna try and see what filler looks like on that, but I'm not really, I have no idea. Very much like the rest of the project. It is warmer today. We put the space heater in here earlier this morning to really bring up the temperature inside of Dreamboat. This table is gonna get sanded and whitewashed today if all goes to plan. I need to sand it and see if there's any other places I need to fill and then move on from there. Here's something I've learned. The edge banding and filler right there has sort of amplified 
a flaw where we didn't cut it correctly. So moving forward, I'm not gonna fix this right now, but moving forward for doing Dreamboat's cabinetry, I need to be really mindful of how I cut things. So definitely learn something. It's whitewashing a little bit differently where I've put wood filler and putty. And for this project, it doesn't really matter because I don't want a uniform look. I want it to look like weathered beech wood. But I think that is something to be mindful of moving forward with staining and painting and stuff for this as a cabinetry side. I want the edges to actually be white and not whitewashed. So I'm just gonna get a coat on the edges while I wait for the whitewash look to set up. If I don't end up liking the whitewash look that I'm going for or I can't achieve the look that I want due to a lack of skill, I certainly could just roll this out in a nice clean bright white and clear coat it and it would look very very nice. So that's my backup plan if this whitewashing sort of to bring out the grain and get that beachy look is a flop. This is where I'm leaving the project for the day. You can see where I've had to add some paint and it's still wet. So we'll see how it looks in the morning. So it's about 50 and I'm not really sure if it's going to actually be warm enough in here, but it's morning so it should get progressively warmer in the sun. And I can get the space heater and fire it up in here to really help this cure. It is definitely going to take multiple coats and I'm not really sure that I actually have enough of this product, but I would be able to buy a smaller one if I need to, but I'd rather use up the stuff I already own. I like the look of this. Definitely. Well, when you sit. The original table had more weight, and because of that, it stayed in place better. I think this is a little jigglier. Feels a little. I don't want to say flimsy, but it has more flex to it, yeah. which I think will affect how it's screwed in on the hardware if we're not mindful. But like by just like putting all your weight on it like yeah. this. But it also has less visual weight. The white, for yeah. sure. I think even if we were to replace this with a more stable unit, I still think a really light color helps in here. Yeah, but it was a good test. It was a fun way to try to figure out if we could do the edge banding, which I think we can. I agree. For end panels and whatever else in Dreamboat. I, I agree. I think proof of concept has been yeah. met. And I, I in the end, we may not end up keeping this, but this is the plywood that I just had kicking around. So, yeah. and I already had the paint and so we really only had to buy the edge banding to test. You were saying people use telescoping legs on these a lot of times for the modification upgrade that they do? Yeah. I think that would be more stable. For this. But on this one, I just switched the hardware. I had to get shorter screws, slightly shorter screws, but otherwise yeah. the leg, the mount, it's all the same. In the end, the telescoping leg would be nice, but that's over $400 plus some time and commitment. And right. we actually, use our table very little. I think it's good. Usually we can't put our legs here. There's a lot of like stuff under here and I think that that's just fine. So I think this is going to work for us. Yeah. We should put it down and see how it does. I agree. Holding weight in the down position. Let's do that.